Now, if it's anything that says favorable difference, will typically be indicated with a large F favorable difference, and that's where the actual costs are less than the standard cost. And that would that would make sense, of course, because costs we don't like in terms of uh, financial accounting. So if the actual cost is less than what we thought the cost should be, then in essence, we've done better than we had expected in some way, and therefore we have a favorable difference indicated with an F, unfavorable difference indicated with a large U, will have the actual cost is greater than the standard cost. So if the cost that actually happened is more than the cost that we thought should happen, uh, the standard, the, the thing that we should happen under normal conditions, then we have an unfavorable difference. Cost variance computation. We're going to get into some math here. We'll look at the computations. Note this will make more sense when we do examples. So we're just going to go through the formulas first. We'll take a look at the formulas. And then we'll take a look at some examples using actual calculations and hopefully that'll bring the formulas to life as we go through the formulas note that you're going to have these terms because we're going to have to shorten these things to like cv ac sc uh, and you're just going to have to get used to that because you don't want to have to write out the entire thing and therefore you're going to have to just learn the terminology so we have the cost variance is going to or cv is going to equal the actual cost ac minus the standard cost so in other words, the cost variance equals the actual cost minus the standard cost. And then we're going to have the, at, so then we're going to have to consider, well, okay, well, what's going to be the actual cost? So the actual cost or AC is going to equal the actual quantity times the actual price. So notice we're considering the actual cost. We're breaking it down into its component parts. The component parts, of course, being the quantity times the price per quantity so the, the quantity that we have times the price per quantity and then we're going to have and we can break that down down to ac equals aq actual cost equals actual quantity times ap actual price the standard cost then is going to equal the standard quantity so that's what we would expect under normal conditions times uh, the standard price what we would think the standard price is under normal conditions or SC standard cost equals uh, SQ standard quantity times uh, SP standard price. So that, let's take a look at a couple definitions as we go through this as well. And hopefully these formulas seem, when you look at them, they start to be kind of self explained they, they seem to make sense, right? So spend some time with the formulas, but again, you'll get a better idea of them as we go through problems and apply them to the problems. You want to keep this with you for some time, however, so that you get down the lettering uh, and be able to, to just basically see the, this information and say, oh, that's cost variance, that's actual cost. And then when we go into the actual formulas, you'll know what those items will be meaning through just the labels with them. So the actual quantity, so AQ, the input, material, or labor used to manufacture the quantity of output. So when we think of actual quantity, we're thinking of it as that we're making things. Remember, we make things, units of inventory, and that includes materials, labor, overhead. We're concentrating here on the materials and labor. We have the actual quantity in terms of material and labor being the units of input that we have, whether that be units of material or typically hours in terms of the labor units. And that's different than, of course, because we're going to have to quantify those. That's not in dollars. We're talking about the materials at quantity and then the standard quantity sq is the standard input for the quantity of output so that's what we would expect to happen so we've got the actual what actually happens the standard kind of like the budget the projecting what we think should happen under the normal conditions and then we've got the actual price ap the actual amount paid to acquire the input material or labor so now we have the actual price and again, we're considering this in terms of material or labor, the, the production type of items. When we make inventory, labor, material, overhead, we're concentrating on material and labor. When we consider those, we're talking about the price of material then, typically per unit, and the price of the labor, typically per hour, or that's one way we could put it down into an hourly rate. Uh, so we'll have to talk about conversions of hours and whatnot, how long it takes to make something, but that's going to be the actual price. And then we've got the standard price, and that's just the standard price. It's the expected price. It's kind of like the budgeted price, the standard, what we would consider to happen under the normal conditions.